Today I'll be doing a review on the Astro AI Digital Multimeter. I've been using this multimeter for a couple of months now and I would like to share my thoughts and my review on what I think about this multimeter. This multimeter has 6,000 counts, which is pretty accurate. And what it means is that this multimeter would take 6,000 different data points per second and it would average it out to the value that you would see on the screen. The multimeter also has a vast array of values that you can measure from. The multimeter can measure voltage in DC form, voltage in AC form, resistance, diode voltage and continuity, capacitance, frequency and duty cycle, temperature, a transistor gain test, microamperage, milliamperage, amps, and a clamp if you have an external clamp that you would like to use to measure amperage using that tool instead of the multimeter. And back to off. We also have the push button options. And for six of them, we'll start with select. Select is used if there's a secondary command on the multimeter that you would like to use. For example, if we go to this option here for resistance, diode voltage, and continuity, pressing select would go through the different options and record the value depending on your selection. So right now we're on continuity, as you can see here, continuity. And if it's continuous, it'll show what the resistance is. We press select again, we have diode voltage and select again. This time it'll measure the resistance of the component or the circuit that you're trying to measure. Then we have this option here. Um, you tap it if you want to hold your value or if you want the value to not change on the screen. This can be especially helpful for data recording. A long press would turn on the screen brightness or it'll turn on the LED light for the screen. We also have the max and min push button option and what this option does is either take the max value of voltage or amperage or the minimum value of voltage or amperage. So if we tap the button right now, we're not recording anything, but you can see it'll record the max value. It'll record the minimum value. And to demonstrate this, um, I have my two leads here. We're going to measure voltage. So turn this dial back to voltage, alternating current. And I'm going to use the outlet that I have to measure around 120 AC volts. And that's because 120 is the United States standard. So I'm going to go ahead and put my leads in the outlet. And yeah, uh, 123 volts, uh, close to 120 that we should be expecting. And one thing to notice about the max and min option is that it does not record the max and min within the time. It's instantaneous. So if you remove the leads, both max and min value is going to be zero or at least close to zero. And if I still stick the leads in the outlet, both max and min, as you can see, maximum, minimum, is going to be close to the same value. So removing the leads now, the minimum value is zero, and the maximum value is also close to zero. And moving on to the next push button option, we have range. And what range means is it defines where you want your decimal point to be um, in measuring from zero volts to whatever range is available on the multimeter. So right now I'm on voltage mode, um, going over, it'll measure up to 100 volt or 99 volts. Uh, if I press range again, it'll measure up to 999 volts. If I press range again, it'll measure up to whatever the rating is at this point. So um, I guess it's up to 600 regardless of regardless of the amount of significant digits that you have. 
We also have the relative push button option and what relative does is it tries to remove the resistance value of the leads to get a more accurate measurement. So pressing the resistance value, you'll have the symbol here. And if you see this symbol, it'll attempt to factor in the resistance that the leads have when measuring your component or different places in your circuit. And finally, we have the Hertz and duty option. And for this option, you'll need to turn the dial to the Hertz and duty option. And this is just switching whether you want to measure frequency or whether you want to measure duty cycle. And to demonstrate this, um, right now we're at frequency, as you can see from the Hertz symbol. I'm going to go ahead and stick my leads back into the output, like so. And in the US, the standard is going to be uh, 60 Hertz, or at least it's going to be around there. And sticking that in, it is around 60 Hertz. And now if you want to measure duty cycle, uh, duty cycle is de just defined as the time ratio between the positive pulse width versus the negative pulse width. So for this scenario, where we're measuring AC voltage, it should be around 50% duty cycle. So if we press this button here, it's exactly 50%. So now that we've went through the push button options, we're going to go ahead and test the options on the dial versus the fluke multimeter that I have. I got my fluke multimeter. Uh, these are what my fluke leads look like. And this is what the Astro AI leads look like. For first test, I have a nine volt battery here and we're going to test the accuracy between the Astro AI multimeter and the Fluke multimeter. So I'm going to go ahead, first the AI. It shows 9.47 volts. Now for the Fluke multimeter. Nine point four nine volts. That's pretty close. We're going to test the AC voltage now. So here's AC, and here is also AC. And I'm going to use the outlet for testing the AC voltage. So for the fluke multimeter, sticking the leads inside the outlet, it shows a hundred and twenty three volts of AC. And going back to the Astro AI multimeter, putting the leads in. 122.8. So that's pretty dang close to the Fluke multimeter. I'd say this multimeter is very accurate. Next, we'll measure resistance of a resistor that I have. And switching the dials and make sure the option is in resistor mode, which uh, seeing this option here, uh, right now it is. So this is the resistor I'll be measuring. Take a closer look at the color coding lines so that you can get um, better visualization whether or not the measurement is correct comparing with these two multimeters. So closer look one more time. Uh, these are the colored lines. For this part, it's recommended to use alligator clips since if you press the components together, it's not going to give you an accurate reading. All right, so I have it connected. So this one is the fluke multimeter and you'll see the value on the screen of the fluke multimeter change. So we have this one and this one here. So 10 ohms. And now we're going to do the Astro AI multimeter. So one side on the red lead and one side on the black lead. And we are getting 12.7 ohms. Next, we'll measure the diode voltage drop. So pressing select again, make sure we get the right option. So right here, the diode symbol, right now in the right option. And for the diode, the white band or the gray band that you see is the negative side. So keep that in mind. 
we have a voltage drop from one side to the other of 0.2 volts. And if we measure it using the fluke multimeter, here make sure to turn the dial on the fluke multimeter to the appropriate value that you want to measure. And the diode symbol for the diode voltage, 0.196 uh, voltage. That's the voltage drop from this point here to this point here. Next is continuity. I have a piece of wire here. Uh, switching this to the continuity option on the fluke multimeter. It'll beep and show the resistance between the red lead and the black lead using this here and using this here. So if the multimeter beeps, that means it has continuity. If not, it'll show zero L. And now for the Astro AI multimeter, and make sure to switch it into the continuity option. Here we go. Uh, here, closer look, that's the continuity option here. So putting these two together, uh, it shows it has continuity and the resistance between one point to the other point is pretty much close to zero. So next we'll do the capacitance value and I'm gonna just display on the screen on what the capacitance value is for each of the multimeters using this capacitor that I have right here. The capacitance value, taking a closer look, we should be expecting around 4.7 microfarads. For the Astro AI multimeter, we have 4.87 microfarads. For the Fluke multimeter, we have 4.79 microfarads. So the next option on the dial, we talked about the frequency and duty cycle already. Uh, next up, we have the temperature measurement on the Astro AI multimeter. And for this option, you're going to need your thermocouple, which I do not have anymore. It looks like a white strand of wire. It's not a metal wire. It looks like... Um, it's a wire that looks like a piece of shoestring that went with the Astro AI multimeter. And make sure that thermocouple is a type K thermocouple. And moving on, we have our transistor test. HFE stands for hyperparameter forward current gain. And what this measures is the ratio of the current gain between the base and the collector of your transistor. I'll be demonstrating this option using a PNP transistor. And this type of PNP transistor is a 2N2907, as you can see here. And remember that it's measuring the ratio between the base and the collector. It's measuring between the base current and the collector current. So the the base current, you'll want to attach the black lead to. The collector current, or the collector lead, you'll want to attach the red lead to. So doing so, we know the middle is the base, and to test which one is the collector, we'll do this lead first. And the ratio for the current amplification between the base and the collector has a factor of 264. So for the last test case, I'm going to be comparing the amperage values between the Astro AI multimeter and the Fluke multimeter. And I'm going to go ahead and be measuring in milliamps since the circuit that I'm going to be testing is a battery, a 220 ohm resistor, and an LED. And I already know the value is going to be below 400 milliamps. So what we're going to do is take this red lead place it into the milliamp banana jack port and same with the fluke lead place it into the respective port here we're going to go into milliamps and we are going to measure in DC voltage as you can see we're in DC mode here we're going to switch it up to DC so pressing this button here and now we're in DC for both the Astro AI and Fluke multimeter. Here for the Astro AI multimeter, we have a 5.87 milliamps. And to the Fluke multimeter, 
we have negative 5.89 milliamps. And yeah, they are pretty close to each other. I know the Fluke multimeter, I've been using it for a couple of years, it's pretty accurate. And seeing the Astro AI multimeter value being close to the Fluke one, this is a pretty good multimeter right here. My final verdict is that the Astro AI is not as accurate as the Fluke multimeter, but for the price point, it's a pretty good deal. So for 40 bucks, this is a pretty good deal on a multimeter. And I do recommend buying this multimeter. And this Fluke multimeter I got for $100 on an eBay auction. And that'll be it. Thank you for watching. Thank you.